Okay, this is an Roland SH-1000. And uh, I, uh, I'm i going to call it pristine, <laughs> but not for the usual reason. I'm calling it pristine because I don't think anybody has ever opened this up since the day it left the factory. Dirt, grime, everything everywhere. Actually, it was opened up. One of the end caps was completely ripped off. Guess why? The person who had it at one point decided to screw handles into it and attach them to the end caps. That was not a good idea since it apparently ripped one of the end caps right off. But look at all this stuff. Boy. This is going to be uh, an interesting project. That's why I bought it. <laughs> what do we got? Okay, we've got keys. I know one of the keys is bad. I don't know why yet. Um, it just didn't feel right. So uh, there's a loose felt pad. This is just my initial inspection. You can see all these resistors. So this is a voltage divider keyboard. It's a monophonic synth. So that's what I'd expect to see. Um, there's going to be buses. Oh, yeah, look at those buses. So when you press a key, it makes contact with the bus, indicates the voltage associated to the key pressed, and there you have it. Now these guys, these are funky little paddle toggle switches. This is remarkable because I have them all except one. And I think that they just, that the plastic paddle part can just... Uh, be unscrewed from it and you know I could buy one crazy price is 40 bucks or something I I got a good shot at uh, just 3d printing one and then shaping it down you know to the right shape and drilling it and installing it that's my preferred plan here um, things that jumped out at me right away when I opened this up Oh, one thing about opening it, really big screws. I mean, this thing is built like a tank. Makes sense, it's the first one they've ever built. So, um, once you get it taken apart, you've got these, these three major assemblies. This is the control section, all right? And then you got these major league wire bundles. The keyboard makes basically its own section and its voltage divider circuitry and then all of this good stuff in here I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that these are the you know this generates the sound okay so we've got the oscillators and LFOs and all that good stuff in here Molex adapters Molex plugs like I've never seen before so many now over here I see power transistors, I see large capacitors, and uh, yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's attached to all of the uh, presets. Oh, oh, somewhere in here is a resistor matrix like on a Moog satellite. Uh, I mean, it could just be boom right there in front of me, you know, because I just haven't ID'd these boards yet. It could be this one, you know, there's a bunch of resistors. Now, there's some interesting stuff here. Look at that. There's a bunch of diodes down here on standoffs away from the circuit board. That's neat. Um, oh, and I'm told that this unit doesn't work, but that the power light comes on. Like, that's supposed to make it an easy fix. But it also was not connected when I took it apart. Um, so... You know, who knows what its real status is? It's part of what I'm going to find out, right? After a bit of cleaning. Um, this guy, that is the tuning potentiometer. It's on the bottom of the synth. That's a really awkward place to put that. There's a power transformer. I like that. Gosh, that just looks... 
I don't know. Looks kind of new. And the, the wiring to it is maybe shinier than the other wiring. So maybe this has been opened up and that it's got a new new transformer in it at least. Now that's sketchy. <laughs> this is a tab off of Oh it is connected. Okay. At first I thought that was just like had nothing to there actually there's actually a black wire on the back of that which is soldered to it. Okay, so fuses. The fuses are so dusty that I have no idea what's in there. Uh, we'll see if I have them. See the right size, or if, you know, they might be good. Wow. I have no idea when this last did anything useful successfully, but it's been missing this end cap for a while. Um, that's going to be an interesting woodworking exercise because they, they glued it on. Yeah, it's glued onto these little pieces here. That's a big chunk of something. Something uh, organic. So it's glued and yeah, glued all about. I mean, that doesn't really matter. I may just break it off, honestly, and send this piece to a buddy of mine and say, hey, can you make me two that are just like it? And then I can install it. And then, you know, obviously this little wedge here has to be replaced. Oh, and this one's missing here as well. And it's just a little wedge of wood that was glued down onto the frame and then formed a point where you could glue the end cap to it because it is just completely, completely glued. There is no, there's no hardware uh, anywhere on the sides of this thing. For the end caps so it was just like completely glued on all right i'm getting breathless just thinking about this thing because <laughs> uh i'm gonna fire it up Ooh, that's not good so this is supposed to hold the uh the bottom screws the bottom four screws which uh, attach the keyboard frame actually to the unit this is one of those anchor points so it's supposed to be right there glued down well it used to be a solid piece of wood it's going to end up getting glued down nice and firmly Ooh, more parts that are coming apart um and then notice that that's got a uh metal ring none of these others had that metal ring that's not cool because what that means is these these bolts that are supposed to be holding things together really were not anchored to anything um gosh i mean these come up from the bottom but maybe Maybe I'm looking at the wrong hole. Maybe, maybe that's not the right hole, but I'm awfully suspicious that that I'm missing the proper anchor points for these. But you know what the anchor point is? It's a nut. So a big square nut, maybe a big washer or something, and then I could attach. Oh, am I just being stupid? Duh. Obviously, they screw into the metal frame of the keyboard. Yeah, I was being stupid. Anyway, it sits on those. So the bolt comes up through there. The keyboard sits on there. And this screws into the metal frame. Hello. And that one I'll repair. So the keyboard sits nice and tight. Now this is bizarre. Okay? I just can't remove this, this shelf. I don't know what's going on. I haven't tried it real hard because I don't want to break it. That's what it looks like inside there. I'll have to review my own video later since I can't see it. Ooh, what's this? Manufactured, inspected. All right. Rolling Corporation. Got a nice little sticker. Oh, we got a serial number. 161038. This is the SH3000. Or SH1000, sorry. And a whole bunch of dust. Let's get the dust out of there. 
Show some respect. All right. <laughs> I think I'm going to order a can of air. All right. Ooh, and I bet this is, isn't just dust. This is going to be like, that's not as greasy as I thought it would be. I thought it would be like greasy dust. Yeah, that's the worst kind. This is neat. <laughs> oh my God, that's what these are. This is, this is an integrated circuit. <laughs> wow, there's, one, two, three, four. Okay. These are called packs. So the circuit diagram has these things it refers to as packs. And it just shows it like it's a little daughter board or something with a bunch of components on it. And I thought, okay, sure. That's cool. No problem. You've got the schematic. You can figure out how it works. And now I see what it really is. This is an early effort, essentially a custom IC. You can see it's got multiple pins. I don't know how many, this is gonna be something. This is far out. One, two, three, four, five. There's seven on that one in the back there. Neat. So, this is going to keep me plenty busy and it's going to take a little longer than my last repair, <laughs> which I don't know. It took like 90 minutes to figure out what was wrong. And then I just had to order some parts, you know, so it was no big deal. This guy though, whoo, it's going to be something else. <laughs>